Welcome back to the Todd Deer Impacker. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for July 9th, 2023. 2023. Of course, we have Transformers news, all different scales, Masterpiece Legends, and the main line Hasbro stuff. We actually got some stuff from Visionaries, which which I'm learning about a new statue, and I'm hearing there was an older statue I didn't know about. Kind of cool stuff we'll talk about there. Well, also some more information about the Cat's Lair from Super 7. I did touch on this in a video yesterday, but I'm going to tell you everything I know about it so far. And then, of course, some updates from Ramen Toy. All the projects going on over there, for the most part, some updates to those projects. Very exciting stuff going on there. The issue with the Batman uh, Gold Label... Batmobile, talk about that, and then there's some TMNT stuff that we are going to talk about that, and then there's some Street Fighter stuff for SDCC, Recolor Ryu, and I'm going to discuss this, and I've, I think I've said this before, and then we're going to get into talking about a rumor, you know, it's one of those things, how much news is there for Star Wars, not much, but there is some, coming up! First off, what's new at Show Z this week? We have the McFans Toys, MS-19E, Flame Commander Rodimus, Prime Metal version. This is 4.72 inches tall. And so this is basically just a metallic repaint of the figure they've already put out. I have that figure, but I think this looks awesome. I did pre-order this myself. I do have it coming in $1 down. Not really sure how much. But the thing about this also is in the past week I've had a lot of people telling me that something's happened to McFans Toys. McFans Toys is uh, no longer going to be making figures or something along those lines. But this update just came on the 6th, meaning that they're still active. There's also a sale on the Planet X PXC03. Terra Lions, Nemios, Victory, Leo. This is a figure for $130 down, about $15 bucks down from the original price and this one will combine with their star saber to become victory saber so with that pretty cool if you have their saber or if you just want this as a standalone figure 130 bucks and we have the kid concepts macross this is the dark blue version the vf1s from kid concepts and this has the fast armor pack limited edition 100 and $80 and uh, $2 down. Now, they've had this before. This is a recolor of one they've had out before. The one they had out before, a little bit questionable on some of the QC, and I hope they fixed it for this one. I don't know just yet, but I'm sure we're going to see some reviews for it. But it does look really cool, and everyone that got the other one thought the other one looked really cool, just some minor QC issues. All right, so getting into Masterpiece, as you know, I go right for the jugular, whatever the big Masterpiece story is right away, and that is Takara and the, the toy color version out of their MP44. So this is the first time the MP44 figure has been reissued since they made the Nemesis Prime version. And so we have all the information about this. We have price and all of that. So it's gonna be about $230. And that is if you're ordering it from the conversion over from Yen. So that is not a horrible price, but it does come with a whole lot less stuff than the original MP44, but just looking at it, it really does look a lot like the toy, the toy deco. Looks pretty interesting, actually. Looking at the alt mode, the alt mode actually appears to be a little bit cleaner. Now, maybe it's just the angles of the picture and those kinds of things right there, but it does look a little bit better, in my opinion, than the original one. But also, with the darker lower legs, it maybe is blending in and hiding some of that kibble that's going on in the back, but... I do think it looks pretty good in both modes, and 230 is the price on this guy. Gone is the trailer. Gone are the minifigures. Gone are all of the frills and thrills, and this is all you get for accessories. But do you really need all those accessories? Well, you kind of, we're kind of getting used to them, but would you rather pay $230 more to get them? No. Uh, I know people do want trailers. A trailer's a thing. It would be nice if they offered offered an optional trailer for I don't know 150 or something 100 bucks wouldn't be 100 150 but this is what you get with the accessories. This is the MP56 Plus Rigorous and that is the Trail Breaker Redeco which seems to be inspired by Diclone Number Five Car Robot Helix 
four-wheel drive yellow variant, and it's sort of a pre-color, in a way, or recolor of their hoist that should be coming down the road. So, uh, pretty cool, interesting stuff. This one's going to be $166, but of course, depends on the retailer when they get it and how much they're going to be charging. Here are the accessories that that's going to come with, and so they don't come with much, really. These recolor ones aren't just loaded down with accessories, and I don't really need them to be, but they do come with so this one's a specific accessory for something. And then here's the alt mode, and the alt mode looks like we'd expect, except it's a little bit low res, but still, there it is. And I'm going to be taking a look at Trailbreaker here in the next couple of days. So this is the KO versus the official and that stuff. But uh, yeah, this mold is going to get lots of use. Okay, so all the questions about the reissue lupus and the color change on the chest and all of that are answered by one picture from TM Reviews. And Sony over there at TM Reviews, really great guy. Check out his channel and he has really done a great job. He's been in the game for years and uh, I do appreciate what he does for the community. Really great dude, so. Anyhow, I wanna show this, and you can see that they say it's kind of an off-white, and if you didn't have them side by side, you wouldn't even really notice that it's not silver, it's off-white, but the left one is the new one, the right one is the original one, and so, with all of that, that's what it looks like. That's the difference, that's what you get to expect, and so, I kind of like this, I kind of, I'm very okay, oh, I'm very okay with this, because the people who had the original one from a long time ago, or the people that ponied up three, four hundred bucks to buy the original one, have something special, and then the people who get the reissue, they still have a great looking figure. Right? We all agree? Okay, so people are getting their hands on the Mod Fans AL01 Ruler, or their take on a roller, and it is kind of really cool, actually. Uh, this is the roller, a bit bigger than a standard one that you'd get with a, an Optimus Prime, but I'm not sure everything about whether it fits in the trailer or all that kind of stuff, but still pretty exciting. It should, they should have designed it to make sure it fits in the trailer just right. Haven't seen a review on it just yet, I'm sure they're going to be popping up everywhere. And then here he is next to Optimus Prime, so this is how big he transforms, which he's a pretty good size roller in the roller mode, but then we transformed to pretty much a carbot size, which is what I expected. And that is so cool, so interesting that somebody just decided to do that. And of course, there's also the little microscopic, I think Dr. Wu or MPH or one of those is making a really small one. So how much smaller than a carbot is he? Sort of in the middle, sort of in the middle between a carbot and a minibot. So I, he is roller. If they made him any bigger, he wouldn't fit in the trailer. And I think that's the way the size works but some of the other carbots are a little shorter than sunstreaker's a little on the tall side but pretty cool and this is how it comes packaged so i have mine on the way i look forward to taking a look at it doing a review on this and will be a fun addition honestly i think i'll have them in the roller mode most of the time so transart is recoloring these rat traps so you got two different colors here we have kind of a white one and a, a dark nemesis one is that what they're calling this this is the bwm 07b moving hamster and then the 07g uh, platinum mouse so that's what they're called that's what they look like and i've got the standard one in the middle i'm not sure i'm gonna go for any of these other recolors it's still kind of cool and interesting maybe you missed out on the original standard one you want to get one of these or you just think these are fun and cool and they're not really all expensive they're like 70 or 80 bucks so it's not too bad. It's not the highest price stuff out there. There is one of them in the alt mode. And if you've seen one in the alt mode, you've seen them all in the alt mode, right? Okay, so I think we've seen this before. Okay, I know I've seen this before, but I don't remember everything about it. This is the Metagate G02 Ming Jing G01 repainted version, limited to 866 bodies. And this modification, double knives can be carried on the way, scabbers, you can set accessory can be combined into a spear and double knives uh, carried by waist. So it's a triple changer, which I don't remember it being a triple changer, but it looks pretty cool, kind of like a samurai warrior looking dude. And then uh, got a bit of a feel of Springer to it uh, because it turns into a, a helicopter, if that's what you want to call it. But still, that's the helicopter mode. I didn't know it turned into a helicopter. I remember it turning into a car, but not the helicopter. And it does feel a little bit like an afterthought, but it's a thing you can do. And there's a car. Now the car looks really clean. So that's a, a pretty decent car mode and a pretty solid bot mode. I don't know about the helicopter mode, but uh, it's something that you can do. And to call it a triple changer, 
sort of impressive, pretty interesting metagame. Okay, so a company called Touch Toys that we have seen this before has a an updated, I think it's a prototype. I'm not sure if these are going to be the final colors, but there's some paint on it too. So it's starting to look like it might be closer to complete. And so with this pretty cool looking figure overall, pretty cool bot mode, but it does transform into a super ultra clean jet mode. So yeah, that is very clean and uh, that looks really good. So... Uh, I've seen a lot of jets that when they hit the jet mode, they look okay. This thing looks fantastic. So I do kind of feel like they gave the priority to the alt mode for this one, even though the bot mode isn't bad. This is really a clean alt mode. And that's with a stand and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, that's where they put their focus. Okay, so Yolo Park is showing off pictures of their AMK series, Rise of the Beast. Rhinox model kit prototype. Now this is of course model kit meaning that you will have to put together, assemble it, non-transformable and probably highly articulated and so with that that's what it looks like. So is it just me or does Rhinox get a lot of love in 2023? I think he does. Uh, I think he's getting it and uh, really a cool character overall and I, I've got a K oversize of the studio series. We've got the masterpiece one coming. We have this one. And of course we have the ones that are coming out with Rise of the Beast. So lots of Rhinox in 2023. This probably won't be out till 2024 though, but still pretty cool and pretty exciting if you're into Beast Wars Rhinox and Rise of the Beast Rhinox. So evidently Robusin is showing off a, a video of the limited edition Optimus Prime robot Rise of the Beast signature series. So going over to their site real quick, you get to see that it says that it is originally $900 on sale for $700, even though $700 was the quoted MSRP on it, and it has the screen to reality, reality and authentic experience, endless fun with an app interaction, exclusive dialogue crafted with Peter Cullen, limited edition, ultimate collector's experience, and shipping time Q4 of this year. So. If you're into this uh, and you want to spend that kind of money on this figure, you might want to pick it up. TFCon Toronto is happy to reveal the Fans Hobby exclusive, and it is the MB19C Huntsman, which will be available to attendees at the Chosen Prime booth at this year's show. It will cost 210 Canadian, so that, that's roughly like 80 US dollars. <laughs> Tell all my Canadian friends up there, just kidding. I know, I mean... All the people in the UK get to make fun of our US dollars, so. Anyways, limited 600 pieces worldwide and only available from Chosen Prime and Fans Hobby. So, if you're interested in this, you're going to have to order it through Chosen Prime or or be at the event and get it straight from there. Looks cool. Interesting color scheme and it's kind of like what they've done with the last one. So, this isn't really Masterpiece, but I'm not sure where to shove this. So, I'm going to shove this right in here and we're going to stick this picture right here. And this is what's coming up with the SDCC exclusive from Super 7. We get this Megatron, and it's the movie Megatron, and maybe gone, but he's definitely not forgotten. The latest 12-inch Transformers Super Cyborg Megatron was inspired by the vintage Goodbye Megatron G1 toy that commemorated the character's demise in the Transformers the movie. And so uh, there's also a t-shirt, some other stuff. So this is something that is going to be at SDCC, and... I'm excited for, looking forward to SDCC for a ton of reasons. All right, I'm excited for SDCC. I'm not excited enough to drive to California. Trust me, I'm not that excited. I'm excited to see the pictures of all the people that made that truck out there. And then, uh, I don't want to drive to another coast in the same year. Anyway, here we go with Rising Force coming soon. And it's their drag strip, so there it is. I don't think it looks that bad. I don't think they're doing too bad. This is a another option for a legend scale uh, Minosaur, and it looks good. The only other one out there really that is in competition for the G1 style is the Magic Square one or Iron Factory or the KOs of Iron Factory. I mean, those are the ones that are out there. So I'm kind of surprised I didn't find more stuff in the legend scale. Just to be honest, I thought there'd be more Legends news this week, but maybe they've used up all their news last week. This is an upgrade kit that is a third party DNA design DK24S upgrade kit for Shadow Glass Grimlock and looks good. Oh it does. We got a wheelie in there. We wheelie do have a wheelie 
and we really do have some upgrade kits and it looks like a lot of fun here let's see the dino mode uh me king me grimlock king so you can get this grimlock on hasbro pulse right now or maybe i say that and it's sold out but here's what's interesting about these upgrade kits they seem to only be available around the time that the figures are available once the figures sell out the upgrade kits are done get produced they don't make them again so if you really like this and you want those upgrade kits you should get it while they're still available but generally they're usually 50 bucks i don't see a price on this yet uh, i'm sure it's already at show z and you can go check it out there but uh, let's see what the bot mode enhancements look like that are on here and then there it is in the bot mode now this is one of the things it has the wheelie figure sword arm filler feet fillers Clear neck parts for dino mode, which we just saw. Posable dino arms and upper jaw filler for dino mode and then co feet cover for dino. So most of it's for dino mode, but I think it's a pretty good looking figure. And if you missed out on the first Grimlock, then you can pick this one up for 55 bucks instead of 200 for the first one. But I do want to say, in my heart of heart, my gut and gut, I really think they're going to reissue Grimlock when Swoop comes out as the last one. It's kind of the beginning, the, the end, the alpha, the omega kind of situation going on with the dino team. So if you're a pterosaur fan, which I kind of am, uh, then you've kind of had a roller coaster ride of pterosaurs lately. You got the G1 version, you got the Amazon Golden Disc version, and you had to pre-order that one for like 20 bucks, and then you got the Target exclusive Buzzworthy Bumblebee version, and then now you're getting this one. This one is the Takara Tomy Beast Wars again, Beast Wars again, BWVS05 Rat Trap and Pterosaur 2 pack. Now. This one is not going to be as easy to get your hands on as these other ones. And so with that, since you've already got the other ones, probably don't need this one. But if you missed out on all the other ones, you got to chase this one down. It's Car Tommy Mall or something along those lines to get that one. Oh, yeah, there's a rat trap in there, too. Uh, you know, it's been a while since the rat trap's been out. I bet you there's people that are like, oh, man, I wish I would have picked that up. And so that's why these kind of two packs are pretty cool, pretty good. But I got to tell you, we're going to be seeing a lot more repaints of figures. We're going to see new characters that they're almost exact same mold repaints for hashtag financial reasons coming up but that's just what what we see during this time so we've got more information some comments by b b mac or ben mccray I, i'm not sure that I, some of it has to do with this anyhow the update on this soundwave dreadnought thunder machine is zartan and zarana are all new o-ring figures they were created based on the originals but were updated as needed both will come on their own blistered card pack. So we already sort of assumed that, knew that, however you want to say it, but Ravage is the MP Ravage mold. Yes, he converts. Yes, he's blue on purpose. Little fun side note, he was supposed to be blue in G1, so I didn't know that, but that's interesting. And then Soundwave has a functioning cassette door Ravage will fit inside of him. The rocket on the back of the Thunder Machine is also doubling as Soundwave Sonic Cannon. He's also roughly 10 inches tall, so Commander-esque in size. And uh, these don't play into a perfect transformer scale. They are 1-1 one -one in size of the original a a Real American Heroes toy. So they're saying that they based everything on the on the alt mode on the Thunder Machine first and worked their way and engineered themselves backwards into Soundwave. And that's what they're saying with all this fun tidbits and information of the development of these things it can be fun okay so we are seeing some stuff getting released in the uk transformers legacy wave 6 deluxe and voyager wave 5 liter in uk real retail i saw this in the u.s too i saw target so uh target is resetting walmart's are resetting but they're also getting new product in which is kind of cool something different than they did in the past they're, they're not going to be holding multiple pallets in the pat in the back waiting they're actually putting new stuff out as it comes which is different than the past which is very very good but with that new product coming out what else is coming out autobot medics in malaysia so kind of fun right there does that say toys r us boy i miss toys r us uh, i know it was expensive but it was fun and i want to show this picture i really thought somebody opened this and did something to it and flipped it around turns out my son's right he said they just ripped the chest off why would they rip the chest off? I don't know. Why do kids do anything they do? Or, sadly enough, this might have been an adult. So this window packaging still isn't the best idea. Last bit of Transformers news before we get on to some other fun stuff. 
this is uh, Transformers Earth Spark new Walmart listings. And I know most of my viewers are saying, so what? I understand. But let's just flip through this real quick. Earth Spark one step flip changer breakdown. Earth Spark tactician hashtag codenamed Atakite. Whatever that means. And then Earth Spark tactician, uh, tactician RC codename uh, Unikite. And then Earth Spark one flip changer Megatron one flip changer Twitch Starscream. And then. There's a Warrior Class Shockwave. There's a Liam and a Terry. Whatever all that means, I hope it helps. Alright, in other news, we're getting into Ramen Toy, and we've got some new pictures of the final product. This isn't test shot, this is full retail product, and it is fantastic. It looks amazing. I've got the test shot, and it's awesome, but this blows the test shot out of the water. Here it is from the side. Now the the stickers are not stickers except for the inside of the door. They are not tamper graphing that, that's a sticker. Everything else is tamper graphed. It is actually painted on and we will see a picture of how it gets painted on or a video, a video shot of how it's painted on. And then of course we're gonna see this thing in the packaging and there it is. It will be packed with the Mad Hawkins figure in the driver's seat which is really cool so that's kind of cool how that's done and then it's also going to be packed with all of this stuff in the bottom of the tray so you you have a very clean looking display piece with a folding flap and all of that and then all the businesses in the back here so pretty cool a lot of thought went into this a lot of thoughts going to go into the shark or whatever whatever the shark's called but uh really fun and exciting Forgot about for about 10 seconds. Great white. The great white. I, I'm looking forward to the great white also. This is awesome. Great white would be every bit as awesome. And then we get into how it is actually being printed. And it's so cool to see this stuff. It's cool to get really cool, exciting stuff. It's also fun to see how it's made. And it's something that I've always had a question. Like, how do they get such perfect and precise paint apps? And you get to see it. And you say, how do they do it so fast? And you get to see it. So that's pretty cool. And oddly enough, when you look at the process, it looks like it takes longer than you would originally think. Like, well, there's so many multiple processes, multiple paint apps. And you can also say some figures have up to 40 paint apps, 40 different paint apps, which is just mind blowing. Here are the heads that are being produced. So pretty exciting, pretty fun. They're making a whole bunch of them. This is kind of how it goes. And packaging them up to get them shipped out. So pretty exciting stuff right there. And then there's the Apache Commander stuff on the sprue or coming off the sprue. This is how it's coming out for Apache Commander as Arrow. And I'm really excited about this figure moving forward with 80s Commanders. And also I'm excited about the Marshall. So I know a few things about the Marshall. I ask questions and a lot of the times it's already been thought out, planned out, and it's already a plan. The things I'm asking for are already going to be included, so I'm excited for the Marshall. I'm excited for this uh, Apache Commander. I'm excited for a lot of things. Pretty much everything coming from Ramatoy. And one last thing, packaging for the Land Drone, which is up for order right now. Still on early bird pricing. 70 bucks is a steal for this thing. It is a fantastic figure, and I, it's, there's not going to there's not going to be another company making a Land Drone such as this anytime soon and this one has light up features and so many reimagined aspects to this figure pretty awesome okay super seven has an sdcc 2023 classic dungeons and dragons red box reaction formidable fighter and that is pretty cool looking and it does kind of give you the vibe of the actual game and not so much the ljn figure but this is for their reactions and it's pretty cool if you've ordered the uh, so there's three other ones that have been made sort of in this style and i've kind of got those coming from bbts and uh 20 bucks is a lot for these i don't know if this one's going to cost more because it's going to be an sccc at their booth but pretty interesting i'm not sure if you'll be able to get it on bbts but if so i will order one all right so thundercats ultimates wave nine wily cat chilla and toy recolors of jaga and green destroyer so one thing i didn't talk about in my video was the fact that we are two waves out that have not delivered yet and they're announcing a third wave now that was addressed by brian as in there will be no more announcements of these till we can get a wave in our hands 
and then move into talking about the cat's lair. So uh, it's it's interesting that he brings up stuff like that before it's even asked and heads that off because, and here's why, because he gets asked that a lot for other toy lines or in the past, and so he heads that off. So I, I think that it's pretty cool that he did do that. And he gave us a lot of financial information in that video with the We Want More Thundercats uh, guy in there, so that was pretty cool. And it's nice to get some updates on some of these things. But now we've got information about the Cat Slayer. Of course, that's what we want to see and we want to hear and know about. Oddly enough, it seems like the day after I make my news or whatever video I'm making, a new picture pops up and here, here is this one. I haven't shown it in the news just yet. So here's the information. It is going to be bigger than the Super 7 Masters of the Universe Snake Mountain. So it's going to be bigger than Snake Mountain, and it is going to possibly, we don't know just yet, we don't know if it's going to have the opening and closing rock formations to make it look like it's in the, in to the back of a mountain, but if it's going to be bigger than Snake Mountain, like a bigger footprint, total, it should have that. It probably will have the rock formations opening and closing back so that you open it up and you see the rocks on the side of the cliff. So that's a possibility, but it's going to be... 650 bucks plus $100 shipping, which is exactly what I've been saying. And every time I talked about this, I said 650. And the reason for that, I think, is because he, if he could charge 750, he would. But he knows his market and he knows what he can get away with charging. And 650 is the max. Now, people are saying it's going to be crowdfunded. I don't think it's crowdfunded. I thought that the, the, the Thunder Tank was crowdfunded, but it turned out it wasn't. It was just you order this many. And then you can order it for this long, for a month, two months, or whatever. And then they, they make those. And then he makes 10% more. So if they make 2000 he's going to make 22200 Or something along those lines. Or something like that. Or maybe it was only like 1% more. I don't know. But he does make a certain extra percentage on top of how many that are ordered for defects. And then after so long, they just sell those on the site or they have some extra to sell. I don't think it's truly going to be a crowdfund. Like, they're not, it's not going to be unlocked tiers. I don't think it's going to be, it's going to be, this is what you get for 650 and we place the orders. Partners are going to place orders for so many. You can order them through those partners and that's how it's going to be. And when it shows up at retail, there's a possibility that there's still going to be a lot of them out there. Like the, like the Thunder Tank, you can go get it at four or five different places right now and it's not sold out. So I thought the Thunder Tank would be sold out at places by now and it's not. Same thing with this, but uh, I'm excited they're making it. It's going to be big. It's going to be awesome. going to be amazing. We're going to have more details at SDCC. So if you're into Turtles, best AXN, TMNT, Toka and Razor figures from the Loyal Subjects are coming. So they're making the Toka and Razor, and they're also making some other figures too. Uh, they are making both figures in standard and arcade colors. So that's what they're doing, and that's kind of cool, kind of interesting. They're a bit smaller than what you're seeing with NECA. Definitely smaller than Super 7. And and I actually question the future of Super 7 and their turtles. So uh, I, I see a lot of this stuff starting to drop off. But Best Eggs In, for whatever reason, they can get their stuff into Walmart. And they can get them on the shelves at Walmart. And they sell. So that's really all you need. Uh, it was a more attractive price point at $17 than it is now at $20. But... Their stuff is not the best, but, you know, it's not absolutely horrible. Everyone act like they were the worst figures in the world. They're not horrible. They're just a little bit small. So there's a Visionaries Knights of the Magical Light Darkling Storm statue by Destro. And it's something that I found on Toy Art. And I did not know that they made a Leoric one. But this does look pretty cool. It's something that uh, the statues, quarter scale lighting up. I, I just didn't know that this was a thing for Visionaries. Visionaries doesn't get much love, and this really does look so gritty. It looks really good. Swappable heads. You can have a, a helmet head or standard head. Then, of course, you can put the uh, mollusk. Is it a mollusk on him? Or whatever is on him. And so you can put that, clip that on there so it lights up and those kinds of things. But pretty cool. Uh, at this point, I don't know how you track down the Leoric, and pricing and availability will be coming soon. Okay, so there's a company that is called Comic Co Coffin Comics, and it is these are figures produced 
by Loose Collect Collectibles. Now, they're featuring three characters. There's Chaotica, Lady Satanus, and La Muerte. And so, I don't know anything about this. I just thought it looked pretty cool. It's the three figures in the front. I guess the figures in the back have already been made in this line. So, pretty cool, pretty interesting. Looks like a whole lot of fun. Pre-orders go live for these on July 15th at BBTS. All right, so Gold Label, Batmobile, Batman, Keaton, 89. The most popular version of Batman that's ever existed and probably ever will exist is the 89. Well, until, you know, our generation dies off. But So with that, this sold out right away. I was refreshing my page, and then, boom, it was there. Click on it, it's sold out. I'm like, whoa. What? <laughs> so... I'm usually able to snag this stuff, but I wasn't paying as close of attention, and it was one of those things I felt like there'd be enough. I don't understand why they can't make enough of these, but uh, I went ahead and gathered up all my stuff that I could return to Walmart that is from McFarlane and returned it. Got me a couple hundred bucks back, and I'll just buy it from a scalper, I guess. I mean, that's either that or I'll just do without. I mean, I'm trying to make this stuff make sense in my head. I wait till they come out, see if I can get on Amazon, give it some time, but yeah. Uh, I think this will be the better version, too. Uh, gold label usually is pretty good so with that I'm not really a DC collector I'm not really a Marvel collector I, I really just like the superpower stuff so the superpower stuff and this and the 86 Batman so there's gonna be a Street Fighter SDCC exclusive Evil Ryu deluxe figure by uh, is it Jada Toys is that who's making it? yeah Jada Toys it is the 112 scale uh, you can buy it directly from the Jada Toys shop. I hear it's it's going up on the 20th at 9 a.m. for sale, and it's going to cost 40 bucks or something along those lines. Now, I don't really care enough because I just want to get one of each of the main characters, but what this starts to tell me is that you keep all these companies. There's now three companies that have made Ryu, and they've made you know the, the same characters over and over and over. Will we ever get a Bison? Will we get M. Bison? Will we get E. Honda? When we get all those basic ones, at least the Street Fighter 2 cast, when we get Guile, when we get those, I want to see them before I start seeing variants. I just have no issue or, or no concern to pick up a variant when I don't even have the core team yet. So that's where I stand, but a lot of people probably really want this. All right, so what's really news is news and rumors. The news is that stuff we already know about is showing up. And yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, not really... Uh, Darth Vader removable helmet's kind of cool, but we've kind of been there, done that in, in, uh, 1997. And, uh, then Han looks pretty good, but I don't know. I'm just growing really tired of buying, you know, 300 of these. And it just gets old after a while when there's really only 97, 96 characters that are in the original trilogy line. How we have 300 figures is just beyond me. We're cracked to 200 and moving to 300. It's beyond me. But anyhow... Uh, I see these in my Walmart, and I just don't buy them. Uh, I don't think they're worth $14, which is the new price point, but some people do feel like it's worth it. Now, we are getting clearance on Black Series, and so that's the $17 on the Camorian Guard, which I got to say, it's one of those things that the roller coaster ride we went up and down of, they, 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 they put out this figure, then it sells out, then it's going for... 80 bucks or something then it restocks they do another restock of it and then it sits everywhere for a long long time till it clearances out and then they put it in the uh, correct packaging finally so now you can get it in the correct packaging looking good for 17 bucks so uh is it worth the roller coaster we went on to get to this point maybe it might be so we got the black series uh cob vanth and cad bane showing up at your targets, at your local targets, if you are interested in this. And, yeah, um, you're either going to have to desecrate the packaging to open it, or just never see them. That's your two options. Lastly, there's a rumor we're finally going to get Starkiller in Black Series Gaming Greats. Vader's Apprentice, probably going to cost like 30 bucks, but uh, this is a, the most requested Black Series figure that I hear all the time. Like, you hear requests, yes, we need a Jedi Luke, which you can get a Jedi Luke right now at BBTS or those places. But when you look at a figure that, for whatever reason, they haven't made, they make all these other weird, crazy, off-the-wall, obscure, repaint characters, but not him, now, I think we're probably going to get him. It's still a rumor, though. It's not for sure. 
So, this is the weekly news for the 9th of July. Let me know what you think about this week's weekly news. What else is going on out there that I missed? And I'd like to know. Like, subscribe to Doom Hanger Out.